Welcome to episode number 39. Oh, we're getting close to the 40th uh, episode there, but uh, this one, very much special. A little special. Uh, first off, I'm Brad Chavisky. My name is Ken Hunmeter. And you might have saw the Darkness episode mm-hmm. from Surly, and so we got something similar going on here. You may have also seen our, our mobile hopcast oh, yes. at Dark Lord Day. Uh, but now we're we're ready to taste the fruits of our labor, and we have a couple bottles of Dark Lord here. Right. Three Floyds. So we have three Floyds, Dark Lord 08, and then three Floyds, Dark Lord 09. Yeah, so we're just going to do a little parallel tasting and and uh, see how they differ. Um, we think that not only is is the 08 aged for a year, but like recipes slightly different. Right, having it at the festival recently, we believe that the 09 is a little thinner and more drinkable. Right. But uh, we'll, we'll be able to compare them side by side here and get a true true test and taste. So we're going to start with the 08. And let's pour it on out. Yeah. Take There's no, no sense in wasting any time here. So that poured out maybe one of our darker pours, I guess. <laughs> That, uh, not only dark, but uh, motor oil thick. I mean, that, that's some pretty viscous stuff right there. Um, <clears throat> right, you can see that it's coating the glass. Good. Th this stuff coats a glass like I've never seen before. Ob obviously, you can see there's, there's no head whatsoever. Right. Like, not at all. <laughs> and and um, it's still... It's so, so when we're talking about lacing with this one, it's a different type of lacing because there, there's no, like... Foam right. retention on the side of the glass, but just the the liquid itself right. is so the, thick. Uh, Bourbon County Stout even was like more sticking to the glass. Like this mm -hmm. is, but same same thing here. So uh, in the aroma, certainly getting some some booze bourbon and, and, <laughs> and booze. <laughs> and I almost feel like the coffee is a little masked here over the bourbon. Yeah, aroma, and I, I get more like uh, chocolatey aromas than coffee. Mm -hmm. So both beers have tons of intelligentsia coffee in it. Shut up! Shut up! And uh, <laughs> also, it's coming at what are these thirteen point five or something around there? Right, thirteen point five percent. It's no uh, walk in the park. It's no mess around. That's <laughs> pretty much as high as you get. That's high for bread. <laughs> so saying something. Right. After after what fifteen, then you're in like a whole. <laughs> different beer game. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think we should go ahead and uh, should try it. Give it a spin. I'm waiting years for this. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Certainly extremely thick. Yeah, having the 09 recently at Dark Lord Day and now having this, it's like this is a different beast altogether. It, it, yeah. It's it's almost feels like you're drinking milk, like a chocolate. <laughs> like a chocolate. Like it, that's the feel yeah. in your mouth because it's so thick, and also I think that the coffee comes comes through infinitely more than it does in the aroma. Than in in the flavor itself, you taste a lot of coffee. Right. You don't. You get a little burn from the booze, but the coffee, you get that more. Wow. And it's such a such a. Delicious coffee flavor too. I mean, it's that intelligentsia, man. It, so that's it, pretty it, good stuff. Yeah. They didn't skimp on the coffee. It's no metropolis, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you haven't seen Brad's other show, he has a coffee cast. Coffee cast. Yeah. <laughs> coffee corner. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit of a connoisseur, as he is with with most of the things he ingests. <laughs> Food, beer, <laughs> coffee. <laughs> but this is fine, a fine beer. This is, is certainly a sipper. Something to share with friends. Um, we've got uh, I don't know, about six or seven people over, and we're going to split both these bottles. Everyone's right. going to be able to try some. So it's kind of like a special occasion type of uh, drinking. Mm -hmm. So I got, I got this bottle in trade from Darkness. Trade of Darkness 08. Oh eight for an O eight Dark Lord, so even trade I would say. That's yeah. It's, it's fair. The same price, so mm -hmm. that's and it's good. I think 
How do you think it compares to the darkness? Um, I think that the the Dark Lord is maybe a little bit more interesting. Um, probably a little bit more flavorful. Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, certainly not a slight against darkness at all because it's a fantabulous beer. Um, but I, I think Dark Lord probably takes it up to the next level a bit. All right, it is rated a little better on Beer Stat. Advocate. So it shows. Currently, this is the number four beer in the world by the Beer Advocate folks. Mm -hmm. For a long stretch of time, it was number two, yeah. only behind the West Flatiron. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's been sinking a little bit. All right, the Abyss came about. Put them down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for that one, too, or we got some Abyss coming up. Oh, Foreshadowing. <laughs> Subtle too, <laughs> <laughs> but what? So we have we have a little bit of treat here to try with this. We got some vanilla bean ice cream. Yeah, we thought it would kind of marry very well. Uh, this is more of you know not, not certainly not something you would drink with your uh, food no. uh, for dinner, <laughs> but uh, we we thought it would certainly go go well with a dessert. So. Um, all right, and vanilla bean is one of the ways Dark Lord is presented. Like, they have the ones aged in vanilla bean, right? Or yeah, exactly. They do uh, a couple different variations on the Dark Lord, where they have one that's, they take just the regular Dark Lord, and they age it in oak barrels. And they have one that's also aged with a bunch of vanilla beans just shoved into the cask. So, uh, we tried both of them at Dark Lord Day. Right. And really good. Right, and we, I think the vanilla bean was a little better. I agree with you. I, I liked it. I thought it was... Totally smooth, drinkable, just like delicious, delicious, real vanilla flavor. You could tell they use the actual vanilla bean like stalks mm -hmm. or whatever pods. I don't know what they call them, but uh, <laughs> and those those things aren't cheap either. Vanilla, oh, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. so, so how do you want to? You know, are we gonna take a bite and take a drink? Yeah, I think so. But, uh, we don't want to just drop it in the beer. Someone will be mm -hmm. watching and cringe like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's certainly oh, delicious. Oh, that's nice. It's just like the nice creamy sweetness from the ice cream marries well with that bitterness from the coffee. How your mouth... And the booze. Your mouth coats with the ice cream and then the Dark Lord comes in and just... And then, I've never tried this before, but it's, this, is, <laughs> this is delightful. It's I've good. had it with other beers, but never with the Dark Lord. Eating and drinking. Why haven't we done this before? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to, I think, finish up our ice cream here and our 08s. And then we're gonna we're gonna head out to the end. Oh nine, oh nine. Should be a fun trip. <laughs> Didn't take too long. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should have savored a little more. <laughs> we didn't yeah. have too big of a sampler size, so you know. All right, but we have some more bottles of yeah. oh nine. So you know, we we got I got plenty in my cellar in the basement. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go ahead and, and pour this guy out and see how that compares. All right. So that poured out with, I think, a little more head at first, which is probably the aging. Of that it, could right? be. That could be. Yeah. Um, this one also might be a little bit more brown than black. Right. It's got a little bit of like amber, if you like, you know. And um, it's just a, it's still pretty thick, but not as thick as the 08. No, it's not coating the glass. As much as the 08 was, still is. But I mean, don't don't get us wrong here. It's still a pretty pretty damn thick beer, but um, it's not to the extent that the o the 08 was. Right. But already different. Yeah. So. And Aroma. I'm thinking even bougier. <laughs> a little more chocolatey. Probably just because it doesn't have any age on it, but nothing's mellowed cer out. Certainly so. more fresh flavors, like more pungent flavors. Give it a try. Yeah. Wow, that is way different. It's completely different. Uh, it, all right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sal. <laughs> uh, this one, uh, I'm getting a little bit more tartness too. Yeah, uh, a little more cocoa, chocolate, less less coffee. coffee. Yeah. And it even it even tastes different than what I remember from the festival that w we had it on tap. Yeah, I see what you're saying with the 
tartness is almost like a little raspberry mm -hmm. happening. Huh. Wow. And it's a, I think it's a little thicker than I remember that being uh, on tap at the festival. Uh, on tap? Mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. you, sometimes the case, right? The bottle is... There's less air getting in there? Right? Um, As it comes out? Maybe we got a little, a little bit of yeast in there? I'm not sure. Uh, I wouldn't think that the air would have anything to do with it, but... And it, this one still boasts the intelligentsia. Right, a little more bold there, but... But less in the flavor. Less in the flavor. More on the label, less, right. in, less in the... Uh, <laughs> Intelligentsia uh, paid a little more to be on the bottle, <laughs> more prominent. Yeah. So, um, based on the bottle, which one would you side with? I think I almost like the weight a little better. I think I do, too. Just, I think it has a little more, like, you just keep, you want a little more, where this, the tartness is, like... It's easier to drink, and you're just kind of like, oh, that's, that's good. I but. think um, I liked the really intense coffee yeah. flavors in the 08, where this, it's a little bit more subdued, because um, I just thought the, the coffee flavor in the 08 was just so authentic and real. Um, I kind of miss that. I don't know if we will get that with the age some age on, on these bottles. I guess we'll <laughs> certainly find out. Next year, we'll find out when we... <laughs> yeah. Do uh, 08 to 09, or yeah. 09 to 010. We certainly got plenty of bottles down there at the festival, so um, yeah. plenty of them will we'll have some age on them. Should we mention the festival? We were, we were down there, what, yeah. March 25th? We, April. April 25th. Huh? Wrong, year. Wrong month. <laughs> <laughs> and we got in line, what, around noon? Something like that. And Donna Mitchell. Shout out! Shout out! We're already holding place in line, so we hopped in there. A couple guys drinking Bud Light behind us. <laughs> they, I don't know what they were doing there. <laughs> I don't think they knew. Their craft brewer friend brought them. He was like, yeah, come to this festival. Um, and so one of them was like, oh, it's a beer festival? Oh, I guess I'll bring a case of beer. So he brought a case of Bud Light. He didn't really know any better. But I thought we, we maybe imparted a, a little bit of knowledge on him that mm -hmm. day. So hopefully he'll, he'll join the movement. Here soon. Craft beer movement. Yes. Craft beer movement. But we got our bottles fast. Like we barely stood in line. Maeve and Mitchell kind of held the place. Yeah, we were we were like off in line trying to get beers for everybody, right. and we couldn't. We could only get so many. And uh, chatting yeah. it up with Jonathan and Brandon. Shut up. <laughs> From beermapping.com. Shut up! And Brandon from the Bridges episode. Previous, yes. So we were just busy that day. Just we busy. We're famous. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough life. Um, yeah, but it, overall, it was a great festival experience. I, I enjoyed it more than I did in uh, years past. Well, I thought we got beer this time. We did get beer, so I, I, I suppose that cures all. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely something to check out if you're in the area at all or feel like traveling mm -hmm. um munster indiana isn't necessarily a destination spot but you can always just fly into chicago make a weekend of it in chicago and people don't realize that it's only about 35 minutes away from downtown okay. we don't go there enough for how close we really place. don't no uh, i usually make it out there maybe five times a year i should really go more but um uh certainly an excellent excellent experience not only do you get to to try some Dark Lord, but a lot of people bring home tons brews. of beers, home brews, yeah, every, everything. Stuff. And uh, as long as you bring something to kind of, you know, trade off. They're willing to share what they got. Absolutely. So it's it a good time. It's a good time at the fest. And then, so before we wrap this up, just kind of want to mention the wax and the why mm -hmm. they wax it. So the waxing is for aging, right? Yeah, basically it's just another barrier from oxygen that's going to... Uh, potentially get into that beer. Sometimes there's uh, that little plastic coating on the caps that you'll always see. That's what's supposed to keep the oxygen out of it. It's basically like a gasket. So the cap will keep it on there and then just to ensure that this will age for years and years and years because it is 13%. This will hold up for right. probably a decade. Or so, I don't know. Uh, they just dip it in wax and really, really seal it in. So if you're going, if you have a beer, like maybe the Worldwide Stout or something that you plan, like I'm going to keep for 
15 years. Dip it in some wax just yeah. to be sure. You can, you can always happen. go to the, uh, your um, local homebrew shop. We'll always have like little beads of wax. You can just melt it down, dip it in real quick if you want. Even if you know homebrew, you can always go to the homebrew shop and get yeah. some wax. Check it out. Maybe it'll spark your interest. <laughs> but also they differentiate between the years with the wax. Right. If you notice, the uh, the 08 is a silver wax and the, and the 09 is a white. So, uh, unlike the darkness that they just dip all colors. Yeah. <laughs> we don't give a shit. Usually it's used to differentiate. In this case it is, but uh, sometimes they just go, go, go nuts, as in surly. So... But this was great showing by Three Floyds, as always. Yes. I uh, can't say I've been too disappointed by many things from Deep Three Floyds. Fox, so. Fox, Fox. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, totally solid brewery. Really lucky to have them uh, within such a close range of our homes and uh, readily available. Right. Yeah, if anyone wants to trade a 08 or an 09, um, I'm up for, or if you have 08 and you want 09, I'll trade. Because <laughs> I liked it better. <laughs> or whatever else. We got, like, we cleaned up down there. We got a bunch of bottles. So if anyone wants to trade anything, just let us know. Get us, get a hold of us. So thanks for watching the Hopcast, and keep watching. We got lots of good stuff coming up. All right. See you next time. Thank you. Woo.